welcome Todd Branson. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, I'm gonna start my presentation today by introducing you to a horse-crazy five-year-old girl. I call her my daughter. Her name's McKenna, and last year she got a digital camera from her grandparents, and uh, we were combing through her pictures uh, about a month or so ago, and you know, you can imagine the amazing pictures from a five-year-old. Uh, crooked pictures, blurry pictures, all kinds of crazy different things from an eyes of a five-year-old, but then that's the, that's the answer. What we began to see, not were the blurry pictures, but the way that the world looked to a five-year-old who just happened to be horse crazy. And I'm gonna show a couple of them to you. Uh, the first one embarrasses my wife who's in the audience because it looks like a colossal disaster. And that was her bedroom one day. It looks like a colossal disaster. So I asked her, McKenna, what are you taking a picture of? And to her, the crib that's upside down is a roof. The crib on the side with Tigger in it was a wall. That blue bag is a door. And I think the words to me, she said, was, Dud, Daddy, it's a horse barn. <laughs> and if you look inside there, there's a plush horse toy. Here's some more pictures. There were about 50 of these. Everything from Barbie dolls, figurines, plush animals, being posed with horses. Horses being posed upstairs. Horses being posed with other posing horses. <laughs> it's over and over and over again. I think the answer is obvious. Here's some more pictures. But she's hooked. She is completely hooked and engaged into her world of horses. Now, I'll remind you, we didn't tell her to go take pictures of horses. She got the camera and she went off on her own. And to the eyes of a five-year-old who loves horses, this is her world. More important, I think she's ready to be part of something grand, something bigger, something that can help cultivate that energy of, of a five-year-old. And that's where I see the biggest threat and the biggest problem. She's already busy with other activities. And there's really no formal way to engage a five-year-old into a wonderful world of horses and the horse industry. <clears throat> so, that's a good question. Now what? What do we do? What can we do to be engaged with five-year-olds? I want to remind you that my five-year-old daughter, even though I work for AQHA, she doesn't have a barn. She has access to grandma and grandpa's horses twice a year. How do we get her engaged with horses at age five? And one thing that I began looking in our research was that organizations like AQHA, other breed organizations, have to trust that a parent, a grandparent, a relative, or a friend is going to bring that child into the industry and introduce them into the industry. So in that research, we looked at AQHYA just specifically. Nothing negative or against AQHYA, but AQHYA's membership, 75% are over the age of 12. So now let's look at my five-year-old daughter again. Let's say we trend with AQHYA's membership, and I wait for the next seven years before I introduce her to the world of AQHA or AQHYA. Do you think in that seven years, her love of horses is gonna diminish? Or maybe will her love for baseball, basketball, soccer, choir practice that she has now from 5.30 to 7.30 on Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, she's got gymnastics. The threat is clear. In about seven years, her digital camera may not look like that when you look at the pictures. And also look at 4-H. 4-H is by far the world's most prominent and prolific organization out there to introduce and, and interact with kids and horses. But 4-H in, involves children ages 9, 10, and they're at the risk of having some heavy government budget cuts. Not to mention 4-H programs on a daily, regular basis from county to county, all 3,400 counties in the United States, have to trust on that county agent, the volunteer certification process, and the relationship that those volunteer leaders make with, with those children. Really, when you think about it, there is no formal way 
to connect a child who loves horses in those critical pre-4-H years. But today, I think that changes. Today, we look at launching a, re a rewarding club that celebrates children around the world and gives us the future of the horse industry. And today's a great day for all of us to feel young. I know it sounds silly, but I want you to think, the first time you pet a horse, you smelled a horse, the first time you rode a horse, maybe go back a little younger. Let's remember that first time you came downstairs and Santa had brought you that first horse toy. Just remember those days. And then I want to invite you to join an awesome movement that will forever change the way today's children and tomorrow's children fostered those relationships that you just thought of when you were a child. You are going to make a positive impact not just on the American court horse industry, but on the entire horse industry. And today we make horses more than just a wish list for Santa. We make them a phenomenon. And we make them a phenomenon not just for these cute little boys, but for their children and for their grandchildren. And this is what we looked at with our research. Children have less time, they're doing more activities, there's less available income, disposable income, and frankly, when you think about it, pathways to getting on the back of a horse are increasingly d diminishing, if not altogether extinct in some parts around the country. We looked at participation in organizations such as AQHYA that have older youth already. And over the past five years, this is what we found. Over the past five years, since 2008, there's been a steady decline in youth participation. In fact, when you look at historically, and then you trend for the future, less children are becoming more involved, less children are being involved with the, the horse industry with each ensuing generation. Now, why is there such a decline? Do we point the finger at AQHYA? Absolutely not. I'll be the first one up here to tell you and tell anybody that AQHYA is an outstanding program, but by far, the best youth development program out there, but it is the best youth development program out there for older youth who have a desire to compete, looking for specific leadership opportunities and vying for scholarships. These wonderful people up here. That's AQHYA. Kids who don't show or don't have the desire to show find themselves doing other activities, and that's where the competition comes in. And those activities do what? It takes their time. Time is a very important factor, and all of us know now, you know, I even know with my five-year-old, it doesn't seem like it took five years. Time is very important. So we researched it. And in fact, 168-hour week, that's seven days, children under the age of 12 spend 70% of that week in bed at school and eating. So what's, the good news is we've got 30% of that week that we, can, that we can attract a child, that we can find pathways to get on the back of a horse. So let's dig deeper into that 30%. Now 30% is reading time, playing time, TV watching time, iPad time, iPhone time, hobbies, outdoor activities, sports. So we're onto something. And if we want to consider horses being as in her photos, a hobby, an outdoor activity and a sport, let's look at that. Well, this is the shocking factor. Five hours a week, on average, children are dedicated to spending time with their hobbies, outdoor activities. That's scary, and sports. The rest of the time, they're reading, they're, they're playing, they're watching TV. I hope you had a chance to um, look at the posters out there. If you haven't, please do. They've got some other sobering facts. There was one poster out there, um, you know, in addition to us considering the five hours that we have at access to on a weekly basis to children, um, the, the Joan Gantz Cooney Foundation, which is the foundation that did the initial research to develop Sesame Street, did a recent research study and said that children are being introduced to technology at age five and completely engaged by age eight. So not only are we being competitive for other activities that take your available time that we have five hours a week to attract, 
they're doing it at a much younger age and they're doing it on iPads and iPhones and with other means of technology. They're growing up digitally. In addition, it's not just that there's time and other activities. We've got to be frank. The last five to seven years has been a tough financial road for families. And the horse industry doesn't really offer, again, I've already said it, I'll say it again, and I'll say it again in 10 minutes. There's no formal engagement for that five-year-old, for those five hours, for the hobbies and the time that they're spending outside. So there's four things that we must do if we want to attract youth. Based on all this research and the work that we did, there's four things that we need to do. The first one, the most obvious, we've got to be available in a relevant and engaging technology. That's obvious. Second, stop competing for the time. Find ways where we can develop cool, innovative programs that become part of the screen time that they're already participating in. Maybe get an opportunity to expand that five hours into 10 hours a week or 15 hours a week when they're doing other activities on iPads and phones and through TV. Probably the most important, again, it, 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 there's no real order for any of these. We've got to be affordable. We've got to be available. And most importantly, we've got to be accessible. Now those five hours, if we just stick to those five hours and we don't consider that the relevant technology is going to expand the time that we get with a child, we've got to consider that that free play time, that hobby time, isn't always 3.30 to 4.30 on Monday through Friday like it was 20, 30 years ago. It's when they have time to do it. So we've got to be accessible. And the most fun part and the last thing, we've got to become young again. We've got to find ways in, in our own minds where we can have that conversation with ourselves to be young, to attract, to be willing and able to captivate a younger child's interest in the wonderful world of horses. So that, may, that gives us an obvious answer. The obvious answer is an all breeds, inclusive, available, wonderful, wonderful world of horses available to children when they have the time to go participate in, in horse activities. A place where children can fall in love with horses and immerse themselves into a wonderful world of horses. Sounds like an easy answer, but do you think we're there? We had to look at ourselves. Are we there? Is AQHA ready? Are other breed organizations ready to be able to develop this engaging, wonderful world of horses for five to eight year olds? And sadly, based on many factors, none more important than the other, we're not. But the goal <clears throat> is to change that today. Change it by influencing a shift and developing a comprehensive educational movement to attract and cultivate a child's love of, of horses at a much younger age. I hope you enjoy it. You would join us in building our own commitment to getting every interested child on the back of a horse and to deliver the next generation of people to the horse industry. AQHA is seeding this effort with a variety of revenue sources and resources including a new awesome, I've seen it every day our marketing team at AQHA amazes me. They have uh, worked on the back end to develop a very cool online researchable database of all things horse, the uh, Junior Master Horsemen, horse products and horse artifacts. These, this library is still in beta testing, it's not available to the public yet, but this library allows families and teachers and leaders to have access to hands-on, on-site, at-home and digital activities that uses the Junior Master Horseman program, that uses the horse and uses horse artifacts to teach children math, science, social studies, life skills, and visual arts, not just to children who are around horses, but children who are around the world.
this is what we need to do to get to where we should be to develop this wonderful world of horses. We need to invest in our own resources. That doesn't mean money. That means all of the cool products that AQHA has done. The Rising Star CD from 20 years ago, Junior Master Horsemen, educational components and content. Uh, secure stable financial support, define new initiatives and lead the charge in seeking the funding sources. And we're in a position to encourage the entire horse industry to teach children about horses through fun and engaging activities. Now, Junior Master Horseman is an outstanding, outstanding program. And I think it's important that we recognize Junior Master Horseman as an all-encompassing horse-based curriculum. But not only for the American quarter horse industry, industry like it is today, but for the entire horse industry. Allow Junior Master Horseman to survive online. Allow it to survive on whiteboards and in cable in the classroom. And I'll give you a very quick personal story. My five-year-old's open house in kindergarten was on Monday of this past week. They've got a smart board in uh, her classroom, and she knows how to operate that better than I do. It's already there. They're using that technology in kindergartners today. And obviously, we've got to be accessible, and being accessible means it's not where the children have to be, but it's where they are. And where they are is when they carry their iPhones and their iPads. <clears throat> this youth development initiative has finally closed the gap in offering the resources necessary to develop a wonderful, all breeds, inclusive world of horses for the sake of children around the world with the ultimate goal of getting every interested child horseback. And this is how it's going to happen. AQHA is supporting the development of a new company. This new company has hired a creative firm that understands children, has a passion for te using technology to encourage healthy living, and has a world-class reputation. They've worked with Random House, most importantly PBS and PBS Kids, National Geographic, and the list is much, much larger. The firm that this uh, new company has hired is Bean Creative. And here's uh, the home page, Bean Creative. They're from Alexandria, Virginia. It's my pleasure to also um, let you know that, that Layla and her husband Keith Masri, they're here. Um, they are the, the owners and president of Bean Creative. They will be milling around, doing a lot of listening to kind of see how they can take elements of their expertise and bring it to the world of the American quarter horse industry and horse industry. You see on their homepage, Weird Al Yankovic, they've launched a science-based educational app for him. If you're familiar with the Harper Collins company like I am, the Fancy Nancy collection, I've read more Fancy Nancy books than I care to admit, but they have uh, developed a really cool app that my daughter loves. We downloaded it together and I haven't seen my iPad since. She just absolutely loves it. It's a, it's a very cool technology. Meaning that to be successful we believe we need to center ourselves the best people in the industry. They're a well-known developer in the educational gaming space and that's important. I'm not talking about building Nintendo games for horses. I'm talking about using relevant technology to teach children about horses, making education still the central focus of this project. They're a firm that we believe will bring all the necessary tools under one roof and give us the best chance of success of connecting children with horses. And this brings us to the big drum roll. Digital oats. A balanced mixture of horse games, activities and more to feed your inspiration. This is a new global, all breeds, inclusive, wonderful world of affordable, wonderful world of horses that unites the industry's most active equine groups, riding centers, trainers, youth camps, youth clubs, dude ranches, are all formal 
delivery and distribution systems to an online library of educational games and activities and more to introduce families to the wonderful world of horses. It's using proven educational components from junior master horsemen and it'll become a vital feeder system into the world of 4-H, into other youth leadership organizations, into youth breed organizations, providing more opportunities to get more children introduced to AQHYA and ultimately bringing children to advanced levels of equine competition. It's a new all breeds company that will unite organizations in the industry and introduce the families. That's the most important piece. And it's going to deliver the next generation of people by introducing a wonderful world of horses, fueling that passion for children, not just at age five, but at age 35, 55, of having horses in their life throughout their entire life and achieving widespread awareness for the horse industry and gaining a strong parental support for this industry as an attractive and engaging, wonderful world for young children to be a part of. Here's some pieces of digital oats that I'll show you. The URL's been uh, secured and it, the name and the stylized logo that you see there. Now I hope the horseshoes make sense that you saw on the floor out there. All of that has already gone through the trademark pro process. Uh, we've also secured the necessary means to be um, available on social networks. You can find a, a, a reserve page on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and YouTube. And we also secured Oat Bytes, a social URL, in order to be the best that we can to deliver the information to parents and families on a regular basis. This is all part of phase one. Phase one is currently underway for the development of digital oats. Um, it also includes um, strong planning and consultation services from Being Creative, again, which is why they're here, why they want to hear your questions, um, help us in the right pathway moving forward. They're going to help us with an initial site prototype and outline a complete set of interactive goals and objectives with a content inventory of all things horse content. Completing these goals gives us a beautiful treasure chest of all the tools that we need to begin developing the interactive digital platform. Obviously, this is going to take some time to put together, so I, I wish I could show you, and here it is, but I can't but I can show you what it is. If the computer will let me. It's an ultimate warehouse. Think of, the, of an ultimate warehouse of all things horses. And it's not just toys, but it's new innovative ways to connect children with those toys. Ways that we haven't even dreamed up yet to, in, to include My Little Pony, of course the World of Briar Horses, Barbie horses, plush toys, find new and innovative ways to attract them to the horse industry through the toys that they're already playing with. Yes, games and activities. That's Children play games and activities all the time. Uh, angry Birds is a good example. I'm sure everybody's got Angry Birds if they've got an iPhone. But what you don't know is that the, of the math and the physics behind Angry Birds. It's educational. Books, movies. We talked about immersing them into this wonderful world of horses. Furnishings. Why does the love of a horse have to stop at a book when it can hang on their walls, when it can be the curtains and the valances and the comforters and the pillows in their bedrooms? Clothing, not show clothing, not the bling bling, but pajamas, purple and pink shirts, little cow cowboy shirts hats, shoes, completely immersing them into the wonderful world of horses that doesn't exist today. And all of this, this ultimate warehouse has, again, the single goal, offering horseback opportunities. This will not be successful if we cannot find new, innovative ways to get children connected with horses. This ultimate warehouse will drive the future of the horse industry. It will bring new professionals into the industry. And if you think about it, this is an industry that is quite frankly disjointed and this is a way to unite it for children. And this success, I've already said it, I'll say it again. The success will be measured to get every interested child horseback. 
Now, just as Digital Oats will use industry resources to feed the inspiration of tomorrow's horsemen and horsewomen, I'm going to leave here by giving you a little inspiration and some food for thought. Remember, we first talked about um, this, this games and activities. Digital Oats is working with people at the National 4-H headquarters to align the, the products and services that Digital Oats will offer with 4-H programs and the 4-H horse project, not just for nine-year-olds in their first year in 4-H, but for five-year-olds. Uh, this does, serves two purposes. One, it provides us an educational platform for the five to eight-year-olds, and two, it allows us the delivery system into 4-H through the Digital Oats older years and allows them to be a part of a 4-H project that they're already familiar with because of the years of engagement they had with, with Digital Oats. We talked about um, furnishings. We're dreaming big. We've been in touch with executives at HGTV. Uh, we aren't, I'm not a home decorator. I, I do not do home decor, but they do. They don't do horses, but we do. Let them help us build that wonderful world of furnishings and maybe bring some new inventions into the world. And we mentioned books and movies. We've had conversations with major motion picture studios to begin the process of licensing horse content. Uh, we've also been in touch with um, the, the two popular youth magazines, Young Rider and Blaze, both of which are, are dedicated to serving content to this wonderful world of horses. And again, this is not just something that AQHA is doing alone. It's been a, a joy to work with others in the industry. Uh, we mentioned working with 4-H. In an advisory level, we've got uh, support from the Cooperative Extension Service and the e-extension and extension.org website. Certified Horsemanship Association, the American Youth Horse Council, the U.S. Pony Club, and some others. Well, pretty exciting, I think. I think it's got a very, very cool potential. Now, there's one thing I know about the horse industry is that when we decide to take something personally, when we go back, remember, we're going to get young the first time you pet a horse, the first time you touched a horse. When we take it personally, we are practically unstoppable collectively. And none of this is possible without you. You play such a vital role in making this possible because of your love and because of your passion. And when we take it personally, it's not just for McKenna. It's for the thousands of kids out there just like her that have the choice. Is it baseball or horses? This here, um, I don't know if you've seen these uh, around. If you look on the posters out there, there's a different one. It's an opportunity to get more information on your phone. You can use several different tag readers. Hold your phone up to it. This has a recap of this presentation as well as um, portals to get you um, connected with uh, the social world of Digital Oats. On the posters out there, there's individual smart tags. I hope you take the time to look at it because it's not just children being introduced to technology at age five and immersed by age eight. It's the research behind it that's really important and that's out there. So, I hope you um, take an opportunity to do that. You can snap this tag right now with your phone, or we'll have um, little business cards at the registration desk or in the back later you can take with you and do that as well. Thank you. <laughs>